live from the FIA Barcelona Gran Via Conference Center in Barcelona, Spain. It's The Cube at HP Discover Barcelona 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, HP. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, hello everyone, welcome back. We are live in Barcelona, Spain for the Cube at HP Barcelona 2014, HP Discover. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante for day two of Wall to Wall, three days of live coverage. This is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, they strike the signal noise. Day one was a uh, big hit, Meg Whitman did her keynote. And kind of a mirror image, really, of the USA show in North America, which happens in Las Vegas, where the Cube is there as on the ground. And a lot of the same tone. Uh, Dave, you know, day one was great. Last night we had a chance to go out and meet some of the executives, went to all the VIP parties, uh, and got a chance to see what was going on on the ground. And clearly there's uh, two major pockets of, uh, uh, of activity late in, the, in the evening events, which was the cloud party and the storage party. Um, and that's where we get all the information, find all the scoops and, and share that with you. Um, a lot of stuff happening, a lot of good changes. Um, a lot of people are trying to figure out uh, internally what's going on at HP, and certainly we are as well, and, and, uh, and sharing that here on theCUBE. And, and today we have a long line of great guests, and we're going to ask them all the, all the questions we need to know. And, and Dave, I want to get your take. Obviously, uh, HP is in the turnaround phase, five-year plan. You know, we speculated yesterday that, you know, as Meg Whitman announced, they're splitting off the PC and printer division, the consumer part, into two Fortune 50 companies. And uh, not a lot of negative backlash on that. I'm not seeing that at all. And I think, you know, the general sentiment was, you know, hey, you know, we're two separate companies anyway. You know, I was talking to some, some senior executives in the hallway here, and, and the consensus is, is that there really is two companies. So why not just create two companies? Um, and that's okay. So I think there's not a lot of backlash. So that's a real big surprise to me. I thought that would be a little bit uh, uh, more uh, controversy. Apparently there isn't. People are kind of relieved. Like, okay, let's just get the show on the road, on, on the road here uh, with, with our performance, and let's retool up and, and bring the products to market. The other thing that's happening is the NFV, uh, the Network Function Virtualization, uh, really is a big growing part of their business. And a lot of technical, uh, kind of sharp elbows, if you will, whether it's open daylight, uh, you're seeing that conversation we had yesterday, to hybrid public cloud, uh, is another conversation. And just in general, you're seeing the real tech stuff happening here at HP, a lot of innovations. Dave, you know, what's your take for what you saw yesterday, day one, and at the evening events? Well, so we saw, um, well, obviously Meg Whitman's uh, keynote, we talked about that yesterday, how we're in year three of a five-year turnaround, and. You know, HP shifting from a, 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 a tether nation to a positive cash position, in a position to do other tuck-in-like acquisitions, such as Eucalyptus, and giving back to the shareholders in the form of dividends and stock buybacks. So we sort of heard that high-level message from Meg that, that things are stabilized and they've invested uh, more in R&D, increasing R&D spending 10% last year coming out with a bunch of new products and, and innovations and so forth. So we heard that from Meg. There were also several product announcements of note. We'd like to obviously review those anytime we're at an event like this. One of the big ones was Superdome. Antonio Neri uh, basically announced uh, the new Superdome. They cut away and actually went to the booth and showed a Superdome with a customer there. I think the customer was Cerner. And this is important. Why? Because not that Superdome's going to change the world, but HP's business critical systems line of business is under fire. It, sh it shrank 29% last quarter. Of course, that's because a lot of customers knew this new product was coming, so they were sitting on their hands in the old product. You remember, John, uh, when HP bought Digital and Tandem, they took some of the high-end systems from those two companies and created this business critical systems and eventually sort of amalgamated them under something called the Itanium line, which was a specialized Intel processor that they were making for HP. And the reason why that's important is because the world is moving to x86 Xeon. So the significance of the announcement yesterday for Superdome is they're announcing x86 on Superdome. We're going to talk to Antonio Neri about that. Will it stabilize the base? Will it allow that base to continue? Because the the longer you can keep that base alive, the better it is. It's a managed decline business. So that was a one big announcement. The other one was in storage. 3PAR announced 
uh, this integrated block and file and object store with a single user interface. They also announced a, a, a capability to, to migrate data from competitor systems, particularly going after VMAX. I think they gave an example of a customer. David Scott interviewed that customer yesterday that was a VMAX customer. They you know, migrated. You, you always see these things uh, in the tech industry, right? Vendor A stealing from vendor B and vice versa. And, the, the, the stealing vendor makes it seem like the whole world is going that way and then vendor B can show some other examples. So it's interesting, but I will say this, since its inception, or at least rise to prominence, 3 par has been a major competitor of uh, the high-end EMC VMAX line. And the interesting thing about that discussion that David Scott had, and we'll have David Scott on later, with the customer is the customer could have chosen uh, an alternative from EMC like um, Extreme IO, so that's you know, a win of you know, one example, looking for, for more uh, as proof points. The other two big things, uh, the register has a story today, uh, which we sort of knew this was coming, but the Chef reseller deal with HP, uh, which was not a formal announcement by HP. I think actually Chef is making the announcement. Uh, Chef, of course, and, and the competitor Puppet, Automate, uh, uh, Infrastructure Provisioning. So that's a big deal. It, it provides cloud-like capability for on-premises infrastructure. It doesn't have to be in the public cloud. So that's a big deal for HP to be able to deliver that kind of cloud-like experience for its customer. And it's obviously a big deal for Chef uh, to have a partner like HP. And then the other one was, um, was uh, a haven on demand. So you're seeing uh, the Vertica guys and the autonomy people take an idle on demand model, which sort of John, uh, Young Johns is the guy that basically help develop that model, bringing that to Haven. So Haven on demand, so Vertica and Autonomy on demand. HP moving to a SaaS model. So you're seeing bits of cloud here. And I said yesterday, John, you get, think of cloud in th three layers. Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. And those are the three areas that we should be tracking and thinking about and observers should be watching HP's progress in that area. HP's an infrastructure vendor, so clearly they should do very well in IAAS. Questions remain as to how they'll do in PaaS. And SaaS, the market, I think, in general, has questions about PaaS. You and I have talked about that. Is it, I, I, is it infrastructure as a service plus or SaaS minus? Is there really a need for that middle PaaS layer? Well, Oracle would say yes, for example. Oracle database and middleware and tools. Uh, certainly Pivotal, companies like Pivotal would say yes. <clears throat> but companies like Amazon and Salesforce might say no. They should be integrated in the top and bottom layers. So we'll see how that shakes out, but uh, it's a little bit unclear to me, John, how HP plays in that pass layer, and clearly they're trying to play in the SaaS layer, but they don't give us much guidance on how big that business is, nor do they give us much guidance on how big the cloud business is, because I think it's still emerging. So those are things that we should be watching. Yeah, and we're going to talk to the cloud group, and I think, Dave, you break a good point, and we were talking about this last night um, at the storage party. Um, the cloud group is young, and they have a big mission ahead of them, and they're, they're gearing up for battle, if you will. Um, a lot of work to be done there, certainly a lot of objectives to, to take care of in-house. In they got to be a customer internally uh, for other groups, but also serve the external market, the customers. Um, but the key to success for the cloud is building a community, and I think what I'm seeing at HP is that their digital marketing uh, efforts don't really take into account a lot of the social. I think that's an improvement area I would make a note of and say, you know, HP's got to do a better job of, of really understanding that the community is a very big part of their ecosystem growth strategy. What I mean by that is, is that HP, like a lot of uh, older companies, have known practices for digital marketing and, and website drive sales, drive people to their pages and then you know, get them in a chokehold and sell them something. Um, that has changed, right? People are talking to their peers before they even talk to, to, the, to the vendors these days. And so the savvy marketers are going out and using the new social channels as a way to, um, to galvanize, a word we were debating yesterday on CrowdChat, um, but to really get the crowd activated and use the crowdsourcing techniques to build a community. And I think what I'm seeing with the cloud group and, and certainly the SDN group is, you know, it's, it's kind of just on their radar screen. It really hasn't embedded and operationalized the social piece into their operations. So to me, that's a really tough lift, heavy lift for the cloud group, which is they got to do all this work in a very short time, get in market position, and, and win developers over to their platform. Without developers, they have no juice, in my opinion. So you got you to gotta have um, uh, a social community. You have to do what storage group has done. 
and the three-part storage team has essentially rebooted HP Storage, and it's a shining example of success of HP. And I got to say that they have a great community. Look at just their attendance and their parties, and that the people feel comfortable. And that's done over a sustained period of time. So you know, hats off to David Scott, Craig Nunes, and the entire storage team because they've built a really, really great community around their efforts. And I think that is uh, one example within HP that I think everyone should emulate. And well, I, I think that's a great point because if you look at HP Storage business in general. It's, it's in decline because the old stuff is declining very fast. This is years and years and years of no R&D investment. That's why HP had to go out and buy 3PAR, but you're seeing that, like you say, shiny new toy, all the action is around 3PAR and, and the new sort of R&D stuff that's come out uh, on the backup side. The other area I wanted to mention quickly, John, is networking. Clearly there's a lot of momentum in that business. People are going to spring in their step. Uh, and, and the other area that was kind of interesting that we found out yesterday is that sort of data center care area, helping customers get to a cloud-like infrastructure, whether it's on-premise or, or hybrid, seems to be getting a lot of traction within HP. Again, uh, uh, the services business in general is down, but there's some real bright spots, and that's what Meg Whitman talked about. Those are the things that they, HP has to shine a light on to regain market momentum. And of course, we are broadcasting live all day wall-to-wall -wall coverage here at HP Discover in Europe, the European show, and the European show's got a different flavor to it. It's a different vibe, obviously, it's in Europe. It's a little bit, they do things a little bit differently, more elegant, I would say, in, in the layout. The European's a little bit different. I would say, I would notice that the Europeans also don't tweet a lot, Dave. So like, you know, observation in the social media lounge, talking to uh, Tim Crawford and others there, um, is, you know, they have the signs that says, join the conversation. Where's the conversation? Yeah. Well, it's on crowdchat.net slash HP Discover. We're documenting that conversation. Join the conversation. If you don't want to join, you can just watch it and watch us comment. We're going to have a transcript for you after. Um, but it's a really different show. European also, market also has a big uh, affinity towards the telcos, and you're seeing a lot of NFB discussion here. So we're going to bring it all to you, uh, what it means, all the analysis, all that data. We'll share that with you here inside theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break with our guest, next guest coming up here inside theCUBE, live in Barcelona. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante.